Hello, I'm Doug. This is Doug's studio, and uh, I'm inviting you here to be with me tonight. We're going to be doing something I think is a lot of fun. Uh, I think it's easy for everybody, and it's uh, printmaking. Some very, very basic techniques in printmaking that I've uh, used in my classes throughout the years, and um, I'll show you the materials I used and how things happen. But the kind of there's several different kinds of printmaking. The one I'm going to be working with you is called mono printing. We just take an object and we use the object to make a print. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, on this panel here are samples of prints I've made. Very, very basic, basic prints. The material I used was styrofoam. So the styrofoam, I paint it and then I press it onto the paper. So in this particular case, I took the brown paper and made a darker brown color. So I got a monochromatic thing. And I'm going to put just one more mark on here, and you're going to watch this thing transform into something else. This was another basic. They started looking like stones to me. So I said, well, I kind of like it like that, but let me try a third. And the stones, and what I like is when I walk in nature, and I see these um, little blades of grass, these weeds growing through the stones. I think it's such a beautiful metaphor. And a uh, metaphor for life, a metaphor for the creative spirit, uh, the heaviness of the stone versus the fragileness of the uh, blade of grass or the, the weed or the flower. And it says something about the creative spirit, the force of life. So that's a metaphor. I mean, you may just see paint and lines, and that's fine. But um, in this particular case, there are like two things I want you to walk away with tonight, not just the idea of making prints, but realizing that in an art experience, um, the reality is that anything can happen. Things can happen that I've never planned, and I'm going to show you something that I think turned out really beautiful, and it was not intentional at all. It was just a part of the, what they call, creative process. Okay, and the other thing, the second thing I'd like you to walk away with tonight is to learn how to see there's an Asian Eastern saying that says um, to see in one thing the 10,000 things. So when we get done with this, we just like to look at an image and see how the image can become a, a storytelling image where you begin to see other things in it. Okay, this particular row of samples are done with paintbrush. So I took a paintbrush and I painted one side of the paintbrush and pressed it against the paper. And if you take a look, that these are really interesting things. Now, Sydney, just stay with the camera. And I'll show you why I think they're interesting, because the minute, the minute you put a frame around it, whoa, you know, things start to happen. The minute you put a frame around it, you're qualifying it. It almost becomes like, my God, this could be in an exhibit. Are they paintbrushes, or it's, is it the triangle I'm looking at? You see, there's this what they call figure ground relationship going on. So a frame makes all the difference in the world. You should always think about framing your pieces. Okay, so we're going to be doing styrofoam. We're going to be doing paintbrush. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you here was I was using stencils. Now, you can get these stencils anywhere. You can go to Michael's, A.C. Moore. Stencils are great. Jasper John's. Very famous 20th century pop artist used stencils exclusively. He made millions of dollars with stencils. Anybody can do this. Um, this is a print by Jasper Johns. This is a print by Paul Clay. And this is a beautiful copy of a painting, a Chinese painting, called The Six Persimmons. And uh, with the potato, I'd like us to try doing the six persimmons or how many you want to do. Um, this is beautiful because of its um, economy of, of, of images, and at the same time, it speaks about the story of life. We start out as nothing, we realize something, we become fully developed, and then we return to nothing. And this is the brushwork, the emptiness. Um, it all says something about the creative force. Uh, with the stencils, I want to get back to this, I happen to do these two pieces. Okay, so I did this one. Obviously, you can see I use stencils. I use this stencil here. Okay, I'll take that up. I'll show you. I used this stencil. Actually, that's kind of beautiful like that. That's an artwork right there. 
That's beautiful. I'm actually, I can get into kinetic art. And if I videotaped this, this art is changing as we're looking at it. Isn't that like life, like waterfalls, okay? But I did this cube, this cube of different letters overlapping each other, superimposing each other, almost like all the language systems that occur in the earth within a single minute, okay? Then this one, I used the stencil, and I had all these dots and splashes, and I said, let me just, I made a cube here, and I thought I was going to make a triangle here, but what happened was I made a very slight angle on the top, and it immediately, I began to see rows and stalls. It reminded me of Noah's Ark. I think this is beautiful. It's poetry. It happens spontaneously, and this is the, this is an example of the anything can happen. Uh, I'm doing art for 50 years, and it's these moments that really become magic, okay? So um, let's just start out with a little, let's just start out with a little paper. Let me get you some paper. If you noticed, I have a lot of colored papers, okay? And um, I like, I just happened to be doing, I was working with the six persimmons idea. So what I did was, I'm going to show you what I did before we do it again for the camera, but I had done this, and it was like, I wasn't crazy about it. So what I did then was I took this piece of paper, it was blank, I pressed it down, made a reverse print, and I did that. This is beautiful uh, in my eyes, okay? Now, if I put a frame around that, it's almost Matisse-like. Now, Matisse did these very very um, organic and lively and spontaneous, some of the shapes are called anthropomorphic uh, things. So um, I kind of saw that, it's like a combination, Matisse and the Chinese monk over there, uh, Mui Qi, M-U-Q-I, okay, Mui Qi. So let's show you how I did that. I took a potato, okay, so let's try clean piece of paper. Now, there's no guarantee what this is going to come out like. I, you know, this could totally flop. So, uh, but I wanted to show you that. So I take the potato, I had cut it in half, and on one side I left totally flat, and the other side I gouged out. Okay? So I'm going to use the gouged out side for right now, and this is a hot color right here. Hot meaning pertaining to warmth. So I'm going to use a cool color. Okay, slightly cool, since my brush is a little dirty. And I'm gonna put it here. Okay, take a look. Well, that's interesting. Now the persimmons has the dark one in the middle, but it doesn't have to be exactly like the persimmons. Okay, and then the thing I did was I took my brush and I began to uh, make a line. Right here. I'm gonna go over some things, doesn't matter. This could be the ledge of the edge of the table. Okay, and I'm gonna take my fine brush, put a little thing on top. Okay, very thin brush, if you could see that. Oh, how sweet, okay. So, put the leg in the back. Okay, now let's just see what happens. What if I was to take another piece that will print on top of that? Let's see where we go. Well, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So, you see how this became that. All right, and I have some suggestions here of, of ideas, and I could just use a little bit. I could use a little, maybe, tone here. Sharpen that up, give a little shape here. Put something on the bottom there. Now I'm just going with what I think something needs help, but I don't want to do too much. Okay, so right now I can leave it like that. I can go around it. Okay, I can go around this thing. I could do this. And you see those drags? 
That's beautiful. You leave that. You want that. That's the mark of the brush. Okay, so by giving it a border, I really made something interesting really, really quickly. Okay? That's not bad. All right? I'm not saying it's great. Noah's are is great. Okay? Um, from my point of view. Okay, so let's go to the paintbrush. Let's see what we can do with the paintbrush. Okay, so I'm going to take this ordinary object. Now, you could do this with anything. You could do this with um, the bottom of your sneakers. Don't go walking through the house, but you could do it with the bottom of your shoes. You could do it with uh, a pair of gloves that you no longer care for. You could paint them up and press them down. Gloves make really interesting shapes. Um, anything. Anything that has a surface to it. Okay, so I've got a light pink color here. So... Let's say I go with the blue. Okay, so this is all I'm doing. Just take a look. So you, you can't be afraid of getting yourself a little. Okay, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Put that there. I really have a, a way of getting dirty all the time. So, And I press it down. Okay, so now let's see what we got. Well, that's interesting. Wow. Now, if I was slightly poetically inclined, if I liked poetry, I can get the lines of a poem over here. Um, there's this poem by Bashu, a Chinese um, artist monk, who wrote this little haiku. It's a beautiful thing. And when you look at the six persimmons, it reminded me of this poem. So look at the six persimmons and listen to this poem. The temple bell stops, but the sound keeps coming out of the flowers. Now, what I see here, I don't see flowers, but the temple bell stops, and the sound keeps coming out of the persimmon, and it keeps echoing out until it fades into a nothing. If you notice, the persimmons to the right and left are almost completely void, and it's almost as though there's an echo that's resonating out and disappearing. So it's that kind of poetry, you know, that you look at a, a thing like this and you say, gee, I see a song there, or I, I see some, some kind of rhyme, I see a poem there. Um, that's what I see. So, but we're not going to write a poem right now. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to do it again. Now, I don't have to do it the same. I could have turned it upside down, press it down. Well, that's interesting. Now I have a, a very opaque image. That means solid-looking paint. And I have faded. That's really beautiful. So let, let's try it again. And... Okay. So what if I said to you, in looking at this, and I, I think this is beautiful just like that. What if I said to you, I titled this piece, The Three Stages of Life? That's very cool. Okay, there's, you come into the world, you develop yourself, and you move on. And how many artists have done that? They've all done art and imagery that symbolizes the various cycle of life. Whether it's monk or hopper. Look at hopper's tables, um, tables for ladies. Um, beautiful painting of a restaurant scene with people in it, but he's telling the story of life. You could tell the story of life with just these, these brushes. So I think that's beautiful, and I think anybody can do that. You don't really need any... You don't need me there to do it. Uh, okay, so let's go on to... Let's save this little guy there. Okay, let's move on to the stencils. The stencils are really fun. Because you can use letters, you could use numbers, you can get them different sizes, and you overlap them, and it, magic just starts to happen, okay? Um, so let's get, let's get this. Okay, so this is what I would do. Typically, I would take, I usually start out with the middle-sized letters, 
okay? You can see them. You can see how much paint I've put on these over the, over the years. Uh, and I really peel it off. It really got, it got more than that. It was heavier. Okay, so I'm going to take some, I'm going to do some red on top of the pink. And I just press it in. And there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I'm just going here and there. So let's see what we have. Well, that's interesting. That's an interesting design. Uh, not enough yet for me. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush off a little and put it down on an angle and get some white. I'm just throwing some, if you notice, I'm putting it on kind of what they call buttery. Okay. And remember, anything can happen. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Okay, so now we're going somewhere. So now we've got some light and dark. Okay, I'm going to move it this, this way. Okay, and I'm going to get some contrast. I haven't gotten any contrast in there yet. I'm going to get some black. Boy, Beaky's going to love doing this. Wow, now, now we're doing something. And, I mean... You know, you could stop there. I could combine. Let me show you. Let's let's not let's not be too linear here. Let's let's think like an artist. Okay, so I, I could combine um, what I did in the previous assignment with this here. Wow. Okay, so the first language that human beings had was the mark making on cave walls. That was the first way of communicating in history. Um, this piece right there, just like that, that is enough to say something about that. So let, let's take a look. Let's put it in the frame. Well, that's beautiful. Believe me, anybody, this is, I didn't plan this. I've been working on different things all week. I didn't plan on putting a brush with the stencil, but you know, it really, really works. So um, could I put another image of a brush? Of course I could. In a different direction. Could I use other colors? Of course I could. But you know, I think that's really good. Just enough right there. So I'm going to leave that just to give you guys an idea. So we have this little honey. Okay. This gets thrown. All right, so that's sweet. So let's get you guys on to styrofoam. We didn't do the styrofoam. And uh, we're almost done here. We're almost done. And I don't want to belabor any of this, but let, let's take the white paper, okay? Now, um, I used to work as a studio artist for um, Macy's Parade Studio, and I went to visit them three or four, about six months ago. And uh, they were getting ready for Thanksgiving. And there were these bags, giant bags were larger than me. And they were loaded with scraps of styrofoam. And I said, gee, what are you doing with those scraps? They look beautiful. They were sculptures by themselves. So um, they said they were recycling them, actually. And um, I took a whole bag. So this is just like two dozen. Okay, but they're all different sizes. They're all different. They're all different shapes. I mean, now think like an artist. Okay, so you're seeing something. My hand is holding it. So you're saying this is three or four inches tall. Think in terms of scale. What if this was 40 feet tall? And it was at a plaza in New York on Fifth Avenue. This would be beautiful. The shadows it would cast on the street in front of those very linear buildings. You have this asymmetrical shape okay so think about something like that I mean that that's how that's how you think and by the way take take a look at this stencil that is really cool so what if I was just to put the white behind it so so you could see look at the colors in the stencil they're abstract it looks like shadows moving it's pretty amazing okay so Things are happening all the time. And so you may say, why is that guy's studio so messy? Well, 
it just never stops. It's like the river, you know, it just keeps moving. Okay, so we are taking our styrofoam. So th this is what I did here with these styrofoam pieces. I just began to lay them down. I saw them as blocks, as stones in a landscape. Um, so let's take, I'm gonna take the uh, darker blue, and this is all you do. You have a flat side. Press it down. Wow. Now, you know, right now I didn't plan this. Those of you who were looking, um, I see a pyramid there. I see a pyramid in Egypt. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and I didn't plan on doing this, but I'm just going to take this, put a little water in my brush, and just pull it around. Beautiful. Okay, and these sand dunes, and, and there's this thing going on, and... Wow, okay, so, I don't know, I, I didn't plan that, but um, what if I was to do one more? I take the apex here, and I just put it there. Yes, another one, and I'll just help it a little. Oh yeah, so now I've got something you can call an Egyptian motif. It's kind of crazy. So we'll leave that off to the side for a while and uh, take this pink and start to use the blocks the way I was using them. All different, all different shapes and you don't have to color the whole thing. You just leave parts of it. Okay, so let's do this. Wow, it's like one of these old walls you see on those roads up in New England. You know, if, if anybody saw Shawshank Redemption, at the end of the show, Morgan Freeman walks up this old country road to this old beautiful tree, and there's this wall with these beautiful old stones in it. I'm sure you must have heard of the movie. Okay. Uh, Okay, so let's get a little here. Okay, so what if I want to, now what if I want to be a little more creative and I take my pencil or I take my marker, which was here, here it is. Okay, I take my marker and I just make that beautiful weave. And you know, the thinner and more elegant it is, the more powerful and beautiful it is. So now if I get my frame, and that's the way I see it. You see those weeds, those blades of grass growing through the black asphalt of a parking lot, and nature just says, you're not killing me. Wow. Okay, that's a statement. So... You can look at all these things and begin to start a journey taking yourself over the entire world. And by that I mean you can take a map. Now, maps are awesome because they already have designs in them. So if you take your image, and a lot of uh, modern artists work with maps because maps are already an artwork. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Now, this happens to be Central America, though we may have viewers who are from any one of the seven countries of Central America. And, um, you know, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Costa Rica, whatever. And we can start using the shapes. With the map. And we can start playing a game of line and form. And I don't have to fill the whole thing in. I could do whatever I want. Wow, that's looking really good. Look at those lines. and They're no longer a map. We've transformed the map into, are these weather systems? You know, what's going on here? 
are these are these designs that are diagramming new kinds of temperature changes um migration routes you know i mean this is what i'm talking about when you learn to see one thing a thousand things so what if we were to now take and just go around this what if we just did this people i'm using this design right here i'm using that Okay, that's the artwork right in there. Very interesting. Okay, so these are just some of the things you can do. Um, I wanted you to think about when you're looking, think about when you're, when you're looking at an object, how do you see in one thing 20, 30, 40 different things? Well, it depends on the kind of question. And many of the questions you get asked in schools are very linear. They're problem-solving questions. What's two plus two? The questions I ask my kids are problem-finding questions. They're metaphoric and they're imaginative. For instance, when you look at this painting of the six persimmons, what do you see in terms of English? Do you see a story? Do you see a song? Do you see a myth? Do you see a legend? Do you see a rhyme? Do you see a haiku poem? Okay, in math, a question would be, that's imaginative, what mathematical function do you see here? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, factoring, geometry's law of similarities? I mean, think about how a mathematician might find this interesting now, looking at this. In science, what process would you associate these shapes with? Mitosis, photosynthesis, crystallization, migration, condensation, evaporation? Very interesting. In art, do you see this becoming, what kind of soundtrack would you assign to this image? Would it be a Gregorian chant? Would it be the sounds of fire crackling? The laughter of children? The sound of a butterfly's wing? You see how you're beginning to think? In, in, in history, I happen to see this as being equivalent to Lincoln's Gettysburg Address because this is just six shapes left in an empty field of gold. His speech was 242 words, and he thought it was a total failure. I mean, you know, one sheet of paper on one side is 500 words. His was like 240-something words, and in that brevity was brilliance and a call to a country to unify. Um, and psychology, what do you see here? What parts of this picture would you see as representing the heart, the feeling heart, the imagining soul, the thinking mind? Would it be the space around here as the soul? Do you see the mind being the center dark one? Do you see the soul being the, look, the um, imagination being the flicks of the, the stalks? I mean, you think about it, the heart, mind, soul relationship. You can see a thousand things in one thing. So you're not just making a print you're not just printing brushes. You're not just throwing colors on a map. You're really beginning to enter into metaphoric expression. You're telling some kind of symbolic story. And um, I hope you have a lot of fun with this and that you're able to create your own masterpiece. Okay, so printmaking, um, I introduced you to mono printing, and I'm telling you to just go with your feelings, turn things upside down. We've used the styrofoam, we use the paintbrush, we use the stencil, and we use the potato. Okay? So uh, remember, anything can happen, and I think that's a good med I think that's a good mantra for life. And I'll see you in another three weeks. Oh, by the way, when you get your work done, submit it to uh, the library. They have a virtual gallery, and they're very excited about exhibiting whatever art you do. Okay? Thank you.